are numbers, so which is basing basing in Q, and then we compute n to be equal to the product of p and q, and then I produce a public key uh, which is based in this value, right? Where n is equal to this, p and q are large numbers, and e it's a value between one and phi of n, where phi of n is equal to one minus p and one minus q. Okay? Now this is the public key to encryption, and the decryption key is the secret key, is the trapdoor inverse function, which is based in P and Q, just like that, okay? Now, we probably should put here the algorithm. The algorithm for the RSA is like, given, given um, E, the message, and N, I can produce the cipher text. That's the algorithm, okay? We, we put in the in the C plus plus or whatever um, uh, language we wanted to use. So given E, which is this value, and given a message, and given N, which is the product of the two prime numbers, we can produce the cipher text. So we set first of all. So we set a value to one, while E is bigger or equal to one. We execute, right? And if E modular 2 is equivalent to 1, then C is produced by C times N mode N, which means M, the message is M square of mode N. And this means that we can print C, the cipher. That's the algorithm. It's very simple and means very, very, very straightforward. Perfect. Okay, this is the part of RSA. As we know, piece of cake because it's used two prime numbers, and this is the secret key, secret key trapdoor function, so we can compute integer factorization problem. Use as an example. If if P and Q is equal to 38, let's let's suppose, let's assume the integer factorization problem of this number would be 38 is equal to 19 times 2. 2 is a prime number, and 19 is a prime number. And these are the secret key for 38, and, and then we choose any random number e to be in between p and q, which can be maybe 5, maybe 3, 3 is another prime number. Of course, this is very simple because it's very small prime numbers, but in practice, in reality, we choose prime numbers which are on the size of 1024 bits. Anyhow, this is the RSA, right? And RSA very soon will be gone. It's much sophisticated because it's also still with the integer factorization problem, but, the, but the, the, the quality of this crypto system is that this space in, in two functions. The difference between an square and an x cubic equal to ax plus b. From linear algebra, from, from high school, this is a line, this is a cube, cubic function, right? And this is the secret. If we understand this, we understand cryptography. This is, this is the difference between a square and a cubic function. This is the cubic, this is the square part, this is the inflection point, and this slope is forever increasing. But because it's a square, then we have the negative part, which is like this. Okay? Now, guess what? This is equal to this, so this is equal to a line. This is the line. This is ax plus b, and this is y squared minus x cubed. Mordell's theorem, it says like if we have one function to the degree of 3, and we're going to put it equalized to another function of degree 1, the intersections will be m times n. m is 3, n is equal to 1, so this is going to be 3. So it's 3 points, 3 rational points. So we base our cryptography in these three rational points. 
Now the thing here is that between two rational numbers, I have infinity many rational numbers. In the integer, in integer factorization problem, if I have the integer 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I say, how many integers do I have between the integer 1 and the integer 4? The answer is use this one and this one. Of course, for a large integer, we have large numbers, right? And especially when we do the primary, uh, the prime number factorization. But in this one, I can just pick up two, no two points. And between this point, how many points do I have here? Well, theoretically speaking, this is an integral. Very nasty, a very ugly integral. Because there's many, many possibilities of, of here. But the point is like, if this point is rational, this point is rational, this point is rational, the, 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 the add of this and this has to be rational in some, some place right here. The thing is that we don't know today too much about elliptic curve. We don't know how many solutions, if we have a finite number of solutions, or a finite number of solutions, or if it's no solutions at all. But that's why elliptic curve cryptography, it turns to be a really good model for securing um, uh, complex or, or, or systems which require or which hold uh, very sensitive uh, and classified data. Okay, so this is what I will be presenting and I will put some papers together and we're going to put the proof, the mathematical proof, the number theory proof and, and, and also the arms for the, uh, for the parallel computing if we, if we start to do some debugging. Okay, thank you.